Good morning class. So, what we were going through in the last class, I think we have done the breathing. We were doing breathing part, and in the breathing we have seen the inspiration and expiration. We have already discussed about this inspiration and the expiration. Inspiration is the process in which the air is intake inside the body and the expiration is the process in which the impure air is again taken out from the body. Now, this is the active process. Why active process? Because in this process we need to use the energy. That's why this is the active process and which completes in Two seconds. This process complete in two seconds. It means we can say that in two seconds only we inhale the air, we intake the air from environment and it reaches to our lungs. Similarly, and the other uh, other uh, properties of this inspiration process, we have already seen that the uh, the inter intercostal muscles move uh, outward and upward, and the diaphragm become fractured. Similarly, in the expiration is the inactive process or you can say it is a passive. Expiration is a passive process. Passive means we do not require any energy to take out air from the body. And this process completes in 3 seconds. It means our body is taking more time in throwing out the, uh, the air from the body. Now, some important point are here that during the exercise, forceful expiration takes place. During the exercise, forceful expiration takes place in which with relaxation of inspiratory muscles, relaxation of inspiratory muscles, Contraction of expiratory or respiratory muscles also takes place. What does it mean? It means during the exercise. While we are doing the exercise, that time our body is utilizing uh, more amount of energy. It means we are requiring more amount of air. We are inhaling more amount of air. If we are inhaling more amount of air, it means we are releasing more amount of air also so that's why we can say the forceful expiration takes place in which what happens actually in the forceful expiration relaxation of inspiratory muscles while the inspiratory muscles uh, which are involved in the inspiration process they relax at the same time the respiratory muscles contract also so that's why we can say that the forceful expiration takes place now the normal breathing as we have discussed that is known as eupnea is also called as abdominal breathing. So the normal breathing is known as the abdominal breathing which is under the control of medulla. Means the medulla region of our brain which controls the normal breathing and that normal breathing is uh, biologically is known as the eupnea or the abdominal breathing. Now in this kind of breathing the Role of diaphragm is 75% and the intercostal muscles play the role 25%. Similarly, in the forceful breathing, it is also called as thoracic breathing and it is controlled by cerebrum. So our normal breathing, that is the eupnea or the abdominal breathing is controlled by the medulla region and the forceful breathing which we are doing during the time of exercise which is also known as the thoracic breathing, uh, breathing is controlled by the cerebrum. And in the forceful breathing, the diaphragm plays a role. The role of diaphragm is only 25% while the role of intercostal muscles is 75% means the moment which is shown during the 
forceful or the normal breathing is like that. During the normal breathing, the role of diaphragm means the diaphragm show more uh, movement, that is 75% movement, and that's why it increases the uh, uh, the the volume of the lungs, and then the air finally cleans inside the lungs. And that time, the intercostal muscles only move 25%. But at the time of forceful breathing, the diaphragm shows only 25% movement, but the intercostal muscles are showing more amount of movement, that is 75%. Now the next. Part of the topic is the spirometry. What is the spirometry actually? Spirometry. It is pulmonary air volume and capacity. Means how much amount of air the lungs can hold, the different different measurement of that air, the volume is known as the spirometry. Now we'll discuss the different types of measurement of the air which is uh, hold by the lungs under the spirometry. Now first of all, the measurement of the volume of volume of inspired and expired air by the help of spirometer means this is an apparatus by which the Inhale the or inspired air and the exhale or the expired air is measured. That how much amount of in air is inhaled and how much amount of air is exhaled out from the body by these apparatus that, that is known as the spirometer and the process of measuring that air is known as the spirometry. Now here we'll discuss different different measurement or different different volumes. First of all, first volume is the tidal volume. It is T V. What we measure under this tidal tidal volume. The, the air which is inspired or expired in normal breathing means under the normal breathing, normal breathing amount of air which is inhaled or exhaled, or we can say the air which is inspired or expired. So in the normal breathing condition when the person is breathing normally that time how much amount of air is which the person is inhaling and how much amount of air the person is exhaling out from the body that amount is known as tidal volume of the lungs and that is approximately 500 ml means in the normal breathing the person intake 500 intake and uh, take out 500 ml volume of the air second is inspiratory rhythm volume inspiratory reserve volume which is also known as IRV. What is this IRV? The air which is inspired forcefully means during the forceful respiration, forceful breathing, air which is inspired beyond tidal volume means during the time of forceful breathing, when the person is breathing forcefully, that time how much amount of air is inspired other than the tidal volume means the tidal volume that is the 500 ml that air, that air will be taken by the man. But the person is doing the forceful breathing, which means he require more amount of air. That's why he will respire forcefully and more amount of air will will go inside the body. That's why that volume is that amount is known as the inspiratory reserve volume, and that is. 3000 ml. Next is expiratory reserve volume which is just opposite to the IRV expiratory reserve volume ERV. Again the same thing during the forceful expiration, the force during the forceful breathing, forceful breathing, the air is expired. Means Within the forceful breathing, the amount of air which is expired out from the body that is known as the expiratory reserve volume, and that is approximately 1100 ml. It means while the person is doing the normal breathing, it will take and take the 500 ml air inside the lungs, and thus the same amount will again thrown out from the body. But during the time of forceful breathing, while the person is doing the forceful breathing, that time the amount of air which will be inspired that is 3000 ml. And at the same time, the forceful expiration will also be uh, taken there. And in that forceful expiration, the 1100 ml uh, air will be expired out. Next is the residual volume. 
the residual volume this is the amount the air which remain in lungs after forceful expiration means you can see this is the air which will remain inside the lungs always remain in lungs always if a person is showing the forceful expiration then the maximum amount of air that is 1100 ml air will be expired out from the body but still some amount of air will remain there inside the body and that is known as the residual volume so we can see that this is the amount of air which will remain inside the lungs always all the time means the lungs will never be empty any time and the amount is 11 uh, it is 1200 ml after that next is the vital capacity of lung vital capacity of lung under this will include irv plus erv plus tv that is 3000 ml plus 1100 ml plus 500 ml and that will be approximately 4600 ml that is the vital capacity of lungs now the next is the total lungs capacity if we talk about the total lung capacity then under this we will include vital capacity and the residual volume so it will be 4600 plus residual volume is 1200 means 5800 ml so we can say that around 6000 ml air is taken inside the body and it is taken outside the body in that the vital capacity means the 4600 ml of the air is actively participating means that amount of air is going inside the body and coming out from the body and the residual volume that is 1200 ml air is always present inside the lungs the total 5800 ml we can say approximately up to 6000 ml in the capacity of the lungs next one more thing is there that is dead space volume dead space volume what is this this is the complete volume of fresh air do not take part in gaseous exchange while a part of this air retain in respiratory tract from external nostrils to terminal bronchial called dead space volume and it is 150 ml what does it mean it is a complete volume of fresh air do not take part in gaseous exchange while part of this air retain in respiratory tract from external nostrils to terminal bronchial called dead space volume it is approximately 150 ml means we can see that the amount of fresh air uh, the volume of that fresh air which is not taking part in the gaseous exchange means the air which is fresh means that is oxygenated air and that is not taking part in the gaseous exchange while a part of this air remain retained in respiratory tract means uh, always our respiratory tract is filled with a certain amount of fresh air and that is known as the dead space volume and that is approximately 150 ml means we can say 150 ml is, is always retained there in our respiratory tract and it is not taking part in the gaseous exchange that is the dead space volume next is minute respiratory volume it is the volume of air which is inspired or expired per minute in normal breathing means during the normal breathing a person is breathing normally per minute per minute how much amount of air is inspired or expired so that total amount of air is known as the minute respiratory volume and it is approximately because we know in the normal breathing the person is inhaling 500 ml that is 6000 ml 
In that alveolar ventilation, it means the volume of fresh air. It is the volume of fresh air which take part in which take part in gaseous exchange per minute. Means this is the volume of fresh air which is taking part in the gaseous exchange per minute, and the uh, the mi the minute respiratory volume is the total amount of air which is inhaled or exhaled per minute. That is including all kind of air which is taking part in the gaseous exchange or which is not taking part in the gaseous exchange. That is minute uh, respiratory volume. But in the alveolar ventilation, only we will conclude the fresh air which is taking part in the gaseous exchange per minute, and that amount of air will be 350 multiplied by 12. It will be 4200 ml air. So for today. We are stopping here only. We today we have discussed the spirometry means all amount of all kind of volumes and the capacity which is uh, shown by the lungs. In the next class, we'll start the exchange of gases. How the gases which have already reached to the lungs, which have already reached to the alveoli, and how the uh, gases will be exchanged from the alveoli to the body, or it will how it will come into the blood. So that process of exchange of gases we'll discuss in the next class. Till then, bye-bye. Have a nice day. Thank you.